Okay. Well, somehow they picked one woman to speak about. Huh? A woman who left more than 250 years ago. Uh, she told you, I write historical novels, yes. Huh? And I can tell you something. You heard Miss Rivas, you heard uh, Mr. MacDonald. Take any history book of any country. Read it. You think that only men lived in those times. <laughs> Very seldom a woman is mentioned. If a woman is mentioned in history books, well, she had to be a queen. <laughs> or something very queer, something very weird had to be around her, like she was beheaded, like Marie Antoinette, or, or Mary Stuart, or maybe she was the mistress of a very famous king, Madame de Pompadour. <laughs> Otherwise, your name doesn't, you no know, woman's name is, is, is in history books, very seldom. Suriname is no exception. If you read history books about Suriname, very seldom you'll see uh, uh, the name of a woman. But one woman's name is mentioned in all the big volumes about Suriname's history. And that is the name Elizabeth Samson. And why? I told you something very weird had to be around her. Yes, her name is mentioned in history books just because she wanted to marry a white man. And she was black, 100% black. <laughs> and she wanted to marry a white man in 1764, exactly 250 years ago. It was slavery time. Suriname was a slavery country. High, high peak of slavery time. And one of the first laws which was made in Suriname was that marriage between black and white are forbidden. So it was forbidden. She went to the church to re register her marriage, but of course she heard that it was forbidden. She couldn't marry. And then she wrote a letter to the owners of Suriname. The owners of Suriname was not Holland in those days, was the Society of Suriname. And she, she wrote a letter. But when the colonial government noticed that she wrote a letter to the directors of the Society of Suriname in Holland, they hurriedly wrote a letter also. <laughs> they had a lot of arguments against such a wedding. 19 arguments against such a wedding. 19 arguments why such a wedding was forbidden and should stay forbidden forever and ever. But they had to admit that in this case, in this one and only case of Elizabeth Samson, there was one argument in favor of the wedding. And what was that? She was so rich. And if she would marry the white man, then, exactly, I, I quote, then her wealth would end up with white people. What was a good thing? <laughs> huh? Now, the directors of the society in Holland didn't know what to do. They suddenly had two letters from Suriname. They passed the buck to the highest authority in Holland, the state general. The state general, highest authority in Holland in those days, they talked about it, they studied it, and they came to a conclusion. Uh, maybe there's a law in Suriname forbidding this, but in fact, Suriname is a Dutch colony, and there is no Dutch law against this. So, in fact, they left it to the colonial government, but there was no, uh, no objection. The answer came to Suriname, but in those days, people had no smartphones, they couldn't email, so, this whole thing lasted three and a half years. <laughs> and when the answer came in Suriname, after three and a half years, and Elizabeth heard that she could have married, unfortunately, the future groom had already died. 
But don't, don't say, ah, because she found herself another one. Yeah. So, and she married. So this, this is what is in the history books. This is what is in the history books. Weird, huh? Uh, anyhow. And being Dutch, what did people write about? About how come she was so rich? She was so rich. Where did her money come from? The history writers, they didn't know how come she was so rich. But they assumed for sure it must have been like this. That she was the slave woman of a white man. And of course she was his mistress. And then he set her free. And when he died, he left her his money. A, white, a black woman is rich. There's no other way than she can be rich than a white man made her rich. And this is what is in the history books. This is what is in the history books. Well, I can tell you, I was a very nosy child. I always wanted to know why. And I studied Suriname's history from since I was very young because I had no answers in all the whys I was asking. And when I read this thing, I always wanted to know, but who was Elizabeth Samson? How come she was so rich? And why was she so eager to get married? I couldn't find the answers in Suriname. I couldn't find the answers. I studied all kinds of books, all kinds of things. I couldn't find the answers. And I knew one thing. I, will I can find the answers if I, had the, if I can go to the, the archives in Holland. But I was living in Suriname. But fate was on my side. Fate was on my side. My husband became an ambassador. <laughs> and we were sent to Brussels. And Brussels is very close to The Hague, where the National Archives are. So, and I had money and I had time. <laughs> Being ambassador's wife. Huh? So I could go frequently to The Hague and research it myself. I did, more than 12 years. Yes, the very first thing is, did she marry? Yes, I found the wedding certificate, I found it. She married, she registered to marry on December 10, 1967, and I found the wedding certificate. She married December 21, and it is beautifully written. Mary, a wedding. Today he married the man's name, Hermanus Daniel Sobre, born in the Hague, age 30 years. He was the groom, and the bride is Elizabeth Samson, born in Paramaribo, age 52. <laughs> she was 22 years older. Huh? So I understood S something is going on here because this was not the man she wanted to marry originally. She wanted to marry a totally different one. And where, where did she find this one? But anyhow, I found a wedding certificate. Now, I can tell you, I found so much information that within a few years, I could demonstrate with facts and papers and all the information I found huh, how wrong the history writers were. That when the history writers wrote that she had inherited her money from a white man who had, whose slave woman she was and who set her free and made her his heir, it wasn't telling us anything about Elizabeth. It was telling us something about the history writer, white male who thought that a black woman can only be rich because a white man made her rich. She made her money herself. And she made white families rich. Anyhow, I found so much information. You know me, so you know I couldn't talk about anything else. <laughs> All day I was talking about Elizabeth and things, what I found, and so. And then um, everybody told me, you must go and doctorate, but if you doctorate, you have to do a lot of other things. <laughs> but I, 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 first I thought, I, I started, I was already writing too, and I started to write a novel. 
But when I found so many controversial things and things which were totally different than we had learned in history class in school and what people were thinking in Suriname, I thought, let me first do a very academic, in a very academic way and reproduce what I found so that people can see what it is, how it really is. And I wanted academic approval of that, that I had done very well with my research. So I made an academic a scientific document and I sent it to the University of Utrecht. And the professor was so enlightened. So the document was published by the University of Utrecht. And the professor wrote to me, oh, oh, I'm so hooked by this Elizabeth Samson. I get up with her and I sleep with her. <laughs> and I said, well, after 250, uh, 250 years still. Anyhow, <laughs> and then I continued eight years more to study, to research Elizabeth. And I found the most weird things about Suriname and Suriname's history in those days. So this is the book about Elizabeth. You can buy it, you can read it. Her life, <laughs> her, her life was not, not only glory, she had a lot of problems. That she wanted to marry a white man at the end of her life, because she was already 52, and the wedding, it lasted only three years. And then she died. And he really inherited everything. And you can guess how much, how much do you think he inherited from her in those days, 250 years ago? What can her wealth have been? More than a million. Yeah! <laughs> I was in New York to speak for businesswomen, and they thought that the first black millionaire was in 1906 in the United States. No, 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 no. 250 years ago in Suriname. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, she made her money herself. She was an excellent businesswoman. That she wanted to marry a white man at the end of her life. You will say, why a white man? That was the only thing what she didn't have. <laughs> she had everything, everything that money could buy. And not two or three, but in abundance. <laughs> huh? For instance, she had 12 dozen uh, uh, Japanese porcelain cups and saucers. How many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> 12 dozen! Huh? If you, she had everything that money could buy. I think, I, I, I found a lot of things that she wrote herself. Huh? I have her, her handwriting and everything. But she never wrote for me why she wanted to marry this white man. So I assume it was a statement. I can have this too. I can, I can do this too. Huh? Because of course people, uh, gave her a lot of obstacles. Uh, she, had, she met with a lot of difficult things in her life, but she overcame them all. And that's why she can be a role model for people of today. Because she didn't have it, an easy life. She, it was very difficult. Very, she had to overcome a lot of problems. But she wanted. And she did. So that's maybe the lesson that we can learn from Elizabeth. Don't let people stop you. If you want to achieve something, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell you one thing more. I told you I couldn't speak about anything else other than Elizabeth. Everybody knew that I was doing this research. One person didn't like it. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> All the time he told me, why, why are you always leaving? 
Hague. Why are you always in the Hague? You have to, you're an ambassador's wife. You have to be in Brussels. You can't leave your post, Mr. Uh, McDonald is here. You can't leave your post just like that and go to another country. And then I had a whole theory. I said, listen, listen, listen. Huh? I must, I, I have to do this. And it sounds, maybe it sounds theatrical, huh? <laughs> But I really, I, this is something, I really had the feeling, I have to do this. And I told them also, I am not doing this for myself. I am doing this for Suriname. The Surinamese people want this from me. You must do your diplomatic work, and I must do this for the Suriname. Huh? And, and I really, I really, from, from, from not only from this, I, all the time, when I write, when I do research, because it's not the writing what is the difficult part, it's the research. Yeah? It takes a lot of time, and you, you get, how do you call it? You, you become a junk. Yeah? You, you never stop. As long as you live, you'll do the research. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money also, but you, you cannot stop, you want to do it. And I really, and I think I'm, I'm an old woman now, but I really, all the time that I did this for, it's now for more than 30 years, I always had a feeling I have to do this for Suriname.